Hello everyone and welcome to another video from the team at Dodgy Software. The topic of this video is file translators. File translators allow you to export 3D models that conform to either an existing format or a custom format for your engine. You don't want to write an exporter in general that exports to a text format because it's very slow to parse. Uh, you want to try and write one for a binary format, but the one that I cover today, which is my template, is a text format, so you'd require to write a parser for this particular one. The way that an exporter will uh, show up inside Maya is you would go to um, Window, Settings and Preferences, Plugin Manager, you'd sort through that list there to select your translator and it will appear when you go to file either you, it will appear when you do export all or export selection what you do to select the format um, to make sure that it's in the format that your translator wants is you go down to files of type and then you select the name of the format that you want and that will become apparent upon successfully registering your plugin with Maya now let's go take a look at some code that uh, supports a um, that's behind rather a file translator. This is the main.cpp file. Uh, we include a few uh, Maya uh, header headers that come straight from the uh, Maya SDK. There are two core functions we have to implement: the initialized plugin and the uninitialized plugin. Now this project creates a DLL file which we rename an MML file for Maya link library. Um, now in order to register your plugin for use with Maya you use the plugin dot register file translator. You pass to it several parameters. The first one is the translator name. Now the translator name will come up in the little drop down where you select the file type on export. The pix map is a small icon that's specific to your exporter. It's, it will show up in the when you're searching for a uh, file to either import or export. But I'll cover importers uh, on another occasion. Um, you pass to it a creator function which is a static member function that creates an instance of a, an MPX file translator. You pass to it an option script the option script is a MEL script callback, which I specify up here as DS file translator option script or dodgy software file translator option script. And it looks like this. Uh, it's a global procedure that returns an integer and the I've got the uh, procedure name here and these are the arguments that it takes. This is where you're able to grab the initial settings uh, that comes from comes from uh, your main function. So when I pass the default options here and the register file translator, uh, that comes in uh, to my script file up here. And what this callback is responsible for is that when you make any changes to the settings in the GUI for your exporter, that it's able to pass, it's not only able to receive the initial settings, it's able to process the settings that you have set up on your GUI and able to send those back to your plugin. The exact mechanism for that, I've got some working uh, callbacks here. It, the function of it is kind of complicated and I've sometimes struggled. I'm not sure if the Mayor API is buggy or not, but I've struggled with this initial settings. Um, but you know, I might come back to that on, a, on another video one day if I do manage to solve that successfully. Um, now to deregister your plugin, you call the plugin dot deregister file translator, and you pass to it the name of the file translator. Now let's go to the call where the magic happens. This is the header for the DS file translator class, and as I said before, it implements an MPX file translator class. I have a static uh, void creator, which is responsible for creating an instance of the MPX file translator. So if we uh, take a look at the source for that, this is the uh, creator function which returns a new instance of that class. There is a uh, reader and a writer. I don't implement a reader. Uh, I haven't done that before. A reader is responsible for importing models from a certain format. 
but what we cover here today is the writer. Um, there are a number of different functions here that are optional that you can override. I've overridden a few of them because I've had to. Um, I have uh, just to give you a, a rough clue, these are some of the functions that are responsible for transforming the information that is stored in the DAG tree into meshes. So I save a file header, I save a mesh, I, I'm capable of saving a matrix. That's in the event that you haven't called freeze transform on a, on a node, then you need to be able to save a matrix to show the offset of the mesh that you've got there. The ability to save vectors, uh, vertices, texture coordinates, um, faces, colors, and uh, just some generic data types that are there. So if I um, go through and show you here, my reader is not implemented. I haven't supported that yet, so I just return the failure for that. For my writer, what I'm doing here is I'm using a standard uh, out, uh, out stream opening that. I'm then saving the header and I've got different modes here. I've got export by selection so that's used if you have exported by selection. The mode parameter here comes through in the writer function so Maya supplies information um, on what mode. So there are two modes export by selection and export all. Um, each can come in very handy. So what I'm doing is, is I'm creating an iterator that goes through all of the meshes in the scene and uh, grabs grabs uh, rather this section down here grabs every single mesh in the scene and save, calls the save method here. Um, the export by selection here goes through the selection so we create a selection list here, we pass to it the current selection list and then we find all of the meshes that are part of that and then we call save mesh on those. So we can highlight multiple meshes which are selected and export a uh, certain count of them. Then I close the file and return success. At the moment there's no failure condition because it's very simple to save a file here and there's not really any need, there's not a chance that this particular uh, project would fail. Now, I don't think it's a good idea for me to go into too much detail on how I'm saving these, but as you can see I'm saving a mesh node there, a world transform, the vertices here. So you can see that I've got some rather complicated code that unless you really want to delve right down into it and then learn about DAG trees, it's all ways of grabbing the information and creating iterators to trace back every small piece of information, but I will scroll up through these so that I guess if you want to pause and take a look at the code that I've got here that you can do that. I might make the code available, um, but probably at this point only on request. Um, one of the harder things to do is to get the materials to export because it's not all that straightforward. In fact, probably nothing's that very straightforward about writing exporters because the DAG tree uh, complicates <laughs> an awful lot of things. Anyway, let's go to Maya and see this in operation. So I go to Window, Settings, Preferences, Plugin Manager, and then I go to the DS File Translator. I click on that, click Close. Um, now what? Uh, I'll create a box. There we go. It's a pretty nice looking box, I reckon. And I'll go to File. I go to Export All and see how I've got uh, files of types, DS, that's the name of our exporter. I'll choose a directory to save it in, in this case I'll save it in the root directory, which is C drive on my computer. And I'll call this one test. I don't have to worry about the extension there because the exporter takes care of the extension. Okay, so we have successfully exported. Now let's have a look at what the, uh, what the file format looks like. This is the result. There's our file, uh, the, the initial header that allows me to determine what type of file it is. Here's the header, and there's my mesh node with the name of the mesh, a uh, small piece of information about the mesh, my world transform, so that's a 4x4 matrix with uh, its row major because you can see the 
columns down there. Now uh, then we go down to vertices where we've exported a list of vertices. These are the faces that connect each one, 4 being the number of vertices that form the face and following numbers being the index. Pardon me. I've got a tag here for the normals. The normals here correspond one for each vertex so they match up with the vertex list up there. Colors, this is uh, the colors for each vertex, in which case here I've set them all to black. Oh, let's go back from there. It's for a later video that I'm not allowed to see that yet. <laughs> this is the uh, texture coordinates. They match up to the vertices. The materials, the face materials, um, and these are, this is the, the material number that applies to each face. So if you notice there are six faces here and there are six faces specified up here in that tab and that uh, node. Now I've got additional properties here. I won't cover what these are because this is meant to be a template exporter that I've written. Um, it will be worked at one point into an exporter for a custom OLECT format, but that's a topic for another video and many, many months of intensive work. I've got a note here to, as well to support animation sequences, but the exporter doesn't support those by default. Anyway, that's the end of this video. Uh, until next time, take care.